Hi everyone, this is Mindy and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be creating for you the new platform pop-up from Lawn Fawn. And I have to say this is probably one of the easiest interactive cards I have really ever created. Once you do it the first time, it just everything goes so smoothly and it's so great for building a scene. So the first thing that I'm going to do is stamp out some images for the inside of my box. I have uh, white cardstock here that is 80 pound, which is my favorite cardstock to Copic color on, which is what I will be using today is my Copic markers. And I'm stamping them in the jet black ink from Lawn Fawn. So I went through some of my older sets and pulled out images that would work for my scene here. I have the tree before and after dandy day. Uh, this is the superstar and also one of the mice from Bubbles of Joy. I did speed up the coloring because that is not really my focus of the video today. So I'm just going to go through and color in all of my images. I'm doing the mice in some brown tones. I think I used E44, 43, and 42. And then I'm going to use an E93 for the belly and the ears, just keeping it really simple and not a ton of shading. I'm going to have a red telescope that's going to have yellow on the ends and then I used a dark gray for the legs. I didn't write all of my colors down so I don't know exactly what I used for the star but it was a three color combination for the bigger star and then I'm going to color in the leaves for one of the trees for you on screen just having a dark and a light shade to really make those leaves pop. Now another idea I had for this which I really want to do is creating an underwater scene with this. That's another I really was a toss up between this nighttime sky and an underwater scene but this nighttime sky won. So after everything is all colored in I lined up the coordinating dies held them in place with a low tack tape and die cut them out. So off screen I did all my die cutting. This is the main platform pop up piece. You need two of them die cut from cilantro cardstock is what I used. This is the platform pop up add on and I die cut that from blue jay cardstock. I have these three T pieces that is part of the regular platform pop up. And then I also have some of these grass pieces that are going to be the kind of inserts also die cut from the cilantro cardstock. Now this piece, this is your base piece. You need two pieces of this and it uh, fits right in a six by six piece of cardstock or pattern paper. It has these score lines on here. So I'm just going to go through fold along all of the score lines and reinforce that with my bone folder. So one thing I do want to mention is that you can also create this out of pattern paper. The only thing I would keep in mind with pattern paper is that it is kind of hard to see the score lines and with the cardstock you can see the score lines really well but sometimes it's a little hard to fold and I'll talk about a trick that I like to do once in a while with that. Now I'm taking a quarter inch score tape and I am going to put it on the flaps. So there was one there at the top. I added the tape there and also to the flap on the side. Take one of your T's and fold that. There's a score line there as well. So you're going to fold that and I'm going to add that double sided tape just to the bottom there underneath that score line. Now we're going to create just one side of our box for right now. I am taking that T and I'm going to just slide that right in that opening there. My double sided tape is kind of facing the inside of our box. Now you're going to pull that through that slot and you just want to make sure that that T that's towards the bottom there is flush up against that opening and also straight. Once we have that lined up, you can remove the backing on that double sided tape and then we'll just fold that back over so it's going to attach to my cilantro cardstock. So this is step one of putting the box together and then I can just kind of push that up a little bit just kind of going over my folds to make sure that they're really nice and crisp. Now next we're going to take that other double sided tape that's on that bigger flap remove the backing of that and then you're going to just fold this right on up kind of where we were before. So it's going to fold up right under the scalloped edge and then you can push down to adhere that. 
So once we push that up, this is one side of our box and I will show you a little bit in faster mode on the second half of it, but I do show it all on screen. Now this one, I already went ahead and pre-folded. What I did want to mention, if you're having trouble with your score line, so some of them I kind of had a hard time getting it to fold over right where the score line is, you can take that over to your score pal and reinforce those folds. So just use your bone folder and your score pal and go right over those score lines. That might help you a little bit with the cardstock. Now, once again, I had attached some of that double-sided tape to my T, the bottom of the T. I slid that through the slot so my T is towards the bottom now, made sure it was flush, and then I pushed that down. And then same thing with that bigger flap, I removed the backing, push that all the way up and now we have the second half of our box. Now this third T that we have, we just trim off where that score line is. We don't need that. This is going to be in the inside where no one's going to see it. Then take that double sided tape, run a strip of that up the center piece there, remove the backing of this. And now I like to use the tweezers to kind of keep my fingers out of the way for this. But the T is going to line up right above that score line on our box. And you just want to kind of eyeball it, make sure that your the top of your T's there are lined up in pretty center. Once you have that in place, you can just push down on that center piece and that's going to attach that third T into the center of our box. Now what you'll want to do is take your other side, take that quarter inch double sided tape and add just a couple strips onto that base. So this is right under that first fold. And this is what's going to help attach our inside pieces together. Next, you're going to take these two, line them up right next to each other, kind of butt them up, line up the scallop piece at the top. And I also line up my flat edge on the bottom. You can remove the backing of your double sided tape from that one flap. And then once it's lined up, just fold that right on over. So we just have this as one long piece right now. Then we can go over to those two longer pieces we just added, remove the backing of that, and then we can kind of fold this shut. So we're going to fold the other half right on top of it. So you just want to make sure that you're lining your two bottom pieces up so they're kind of straight. This is what's going to help make it lay flat on a table if you decide to display these or if the recipient wants to display it. And then once we push that down to secure it, we're going to go over to that last flap. We're going to kind of just lift that up a little bit, remove the backing, and then we can just seal that shut. So here is our completed box really really easy and then you just push it up it is just so cute it reminds me of like those those triangle uh, games where you'd write on the inside of the flaps and you'd have to move your fingers that's what it kind of reminds me of I might have just dated myself there but I love this now I can move on to decorating some of the elements for the inside of my little scene starting with these three pieces that I die cut out of cilantro cardstock. And I am using the new Rainforest ink to just lightly ink blend some color on the top of that grass. I love this Rainforest color. I love the cardstock. So I was super excited to see that they have it in an ink pad because it is amazing on cilantro cardstock. So I did this for all three of them. And later on, I do cut an extra one that I'm going to trim out to put on the front of the box. And I do the same thing, just doing a little bit of ink blending of that Rainforest ink. This next piece that I had die cut out of the Blue Jay cardstock is actually an add-on piece. So it's not included with it. It is an add-on. I think it's great though, but the box looks good either way. So I started out with the Yeti pigment ink from Lawn Fawn and I am taking the Slimline Cloudy Stencil and just lightly ink blending this on. I'm using my Make Art Station to hold my uh, stencil down, but you could just use some post-it tape to hold it in place too. Now it was really hard to see where I was sitting with the, the light shining in my face if this was transferring. So I just kind of lifted up a little bit to peek and there was quite a bit of the white ink there. So I'm going to remove the magnets, kind of shift this down a little bit and repeat those same steps. Now I was struggling a little bit with the pigment ink and the blending brush. Normally I love my blending brushes, but pigment ink is so thick. So I decided to go and just grab one of my foam blending tools. And that's just a little bit easier for me to blend on or even dab on that pigment ink. I can't have a cloudy sky without adding splatters. So once I finish this last layer down at the very bottom, 
I'm going to bring in the starry watercolor. So it's just got some sparkle and shine to it. I'm going to bring that out and you can use the white or the different shades of gold. I'm going to add a couple drops of water to the white and mix that up with my paintbrush and just splatter this all over the background to give the look of stars. And then I'm gonna set it off on the side to dry for a little while, and I'm gonna work on a few other pieces of my platform pop-up card. Starting with those grass pieces, I have three of them that I ink blended on. I am adding on the 1 8 of an inch double-sided tape to the back side of it at the very bottom. This is going to cover up those white tees that we had placed in the inside of it. So you just remove the backing of each of those pieces and just place that right over the tees. Now, if you didn't have the add-on, this would be wide open. They could see it from either side. And what I would do is actually die cut three more and put it on the other side. So it's consistent. You're not seeing those white pieces um, from the inside of it. But being that I'm using the add-on to this, it's going to cover that. Nobody is going to see from that angle. So I like to just fold it up every now and then because for one, it's really fun. And two, I just want to make sure everything is still moving correctly. Now that my background is dry, I just kind of reinforce those folds and I'm going to take that one eighth of an inch of double-sided tape again, place it on the back towards the very bottom. Now, before I even attach it, I need to start setting my scene. I need to kind of decide what's going on top of the grass and what I'm going to place in the background. I do have two trees here. And normally, if you've watched my videos, I like to lay out my scenes before attaching them. And that's really hard to do with a pop-up card. So I just kind of had to guess. And I didn't push down on my adhesive really well until I was ready. Now, I did add a tree to that backdrop and trimmed off the excess. I pulled up the backing on that double-sided tape, and this is going to just tuck right inside of our platform. It doesn't need to go down really far. You don't want to shove it in. It just lines up perfectly with the score lines, and it kind of meets where the top of the platform is. Now, for most of the pieces, when it comes to the actual putting together of the box, I used the double-sided tape because I know that is a really strong adhesive and will hold up to everything kind of moving all the time. Whereas the pieces or the critters and the tree that I'm adding to the inside, I'm just using my double-sided tape and just make sure that you're not going too high with the tape on the critter because otherwise that tape on the back is going to stick and they won't be able to open up your card. Now here I thought it would be really cute to have this shooting star, shooting star kind of out in the middle of nowhere in my card. So I'm using a piece of acetate to do this. I just trimmed it down to a really skinny strip, probably like an eighth of an inch, and added that double-sided tape to the top and bottom. And then I put that behind my grass and then attached my shooting star. So you'll see it here in just a minute. It just looks really neat to kind of have that out in the open like that with disguised with that acetate. One last thing I'm going to do to decorate the inside of this is take the new sparkle glaze and add that to the stars. I'm not adding a heavy layer, just a really light layer to add just hints of sparkle to my stars. Our finishing touch is going to be our sentiment. I am using the Superstar stamp set to stamp a sentiment here. Now this is a piece of white cardstock that I die cut from the platform pop-up set. I'm sorry, I can't remember if it's on the add-on or if it's on the regular platform pop-up set, but it just has a stitched rectangle that fits on the front of the box. So I lined up the word, uh, what is it, super that I have here, and I stamped it stellar. I have stellar. And I stamped it in sunflower ink, which was a great color matched up with my dark blue. Now I took the outline of that word, and I honestly tried to make it crooked. I tried to have it offset, but it's kind of hard to see. And I ended up lining it up perfect. I mean, what are the chances of that happening? So after I have that stamped in the jet black ink, I'm adding the two smaller sentiments to the top and bottom. So this is going to say, have a stellar birthday. Now you can have your message here. You could put it on the back of your card, whichever way you prefer. I thought it was really cute in the front. This is that extra piece I had die cut and added to the front. I think it's super cute, but then once I added my sentiment with my tape runner, it kind of got covered up, but oh well, I'm leaving it. So I added that tape runner and I'm gonna just fold this back up so that I can push down that sentiment and it sticks really well to the front. So there it is, our platform pop-up card with this great starry scene, all the mice are coming out to check it out. 
I love this. This really was so easy to put together. It's great for scene building these little scenes. You don't need a ton of images to fill up the inside of the box. I don't have the exact measurements of the box, but with this add-on, it does fit inside an A2 sized envelope, I believe. So it's really not that big and it's super cute. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well. And if you're checking out my blog at the time of this video or not long after, be sure to look for the freebie that is included over from purchasing from the Lawn Fawn site that is a limited time special. Thank you so much for joining me today. Here are a few other videos I think you may enjoy.